Hey everybody, welcome. Joshua here in Desirano at the Dog Crown. Dog Crown? So here, uh, rocking out this game. Um, and Gianacque is coming off playing last night against the Smith Falls Ritos, which was quite a game for them. Um, and that uh, they won that one in five, but it went 5 5 there for a while, 4 4 for a while. It was a pretty intense game. Uh, big hit um, laid out on uh, Brock Higgs uh, by number 21 that uh, took off his helmet. Uh, and um, there was a fighting in the last five minutes about those uh, players and those games got extra game suspension. So other than that, um, Kianakwe has a short bench. I believe I count 13 players in the warm-up and the goalie. Goalie is not Nevers, even though he is with Nevers' number. Uh, that is Withers, Terry Withers, I believe they said his name was. Um, and um, I'll screw it up during the game, don't worry. And then um, as to, um, you'll see number six, uh, Herringen, um, not number six, Herringen, number six, Tim Tennant. You saw him last night, backup boy for the Islanders. Uh, he's playing out today, so he's going to be wearing uh, number six. Other than that, excited to see what happens here. So the Zamboni's finishing his last uh, lap here around in front. And... Uh, spot to be sitting, but unfortunately it's the only spot go for the uh, center ice. So people are walking around here, you'll see here, game's just getting ready. They got the ice coming up down here. We got the old Zamboni. Up there in the distance. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. I just followed that Zamboni. Pretty good. Whoa, we'll go over here. They're getting up into the uh, score box there. Dan Ockway will be coming out from this doorway down here. And we'll have the uh, Bulldogs coming out at this doorway. As you can see, they have their own change room there for the Bulldogs. No soliciting. Um, but yeah, so they come out down here. And then again, as you said, the Islanders come out down this door. As you can see, they have a little gym up top there, music area, guys tucked in there in the dark. They have a little seating viewing area right there. Uh, canteen, I just had a hot dog, delicious. Make sure you, uh, if you're here at the dog pound, you get yourself a hot dog, maybe some fries. Good times. We got the heaters on right now, so let's hope the heaters stay on for the game and we get to enjoy nice heat. You'll know, you'll know, because if you come back and I'm wearing my jacket, it got cold. What do we got going on here? Look over here, like I said, we got this. The dogs right there, getting ready. Still haven't had the Islanders peek out yet. They're doing the, you know, better, you know, fashionably late, that's what I'm gonna say here. <laughs> Expect we'll see the uh, referees coming out here in a moment. Inside the building on my phone. I almost was gonna do it, but uh, coming inside it dropped down significantly. So we're going to uh, have a, like I said, just this after kind of one here. And the referees are coming onto the ice. So we expect to see the uh, Bulldogs follow suit here. And then we'll have the Islanders coming out as well.
lots of seats here, but they're gonna jam right in. So, and this is one of our remaining games here in the USHL. So the Islanders are coming out now here, so we're just waiting for the anthem and everything to get going here. And that's the anthem, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna get ready to get this game going here in the dog pound. See Tom Dixon here. We have Selleck. Again, another notables. Number six for the Islanders is Tim Tennant. And we do have Withers in that here, wearing the Burz's number all the way down on this end. In that. I can't remember what the name of this goalie is so yeah yellow pads so horrible so horrible commentating names and the face off is won by the Islanders and the back pedal and then fired out here in deep into the zone and the Bulldogs will just Start to break out. They did lose it there, essentially, and then off of a player's foot. And it's gonna come back out here to center. But not much further than that. As the Bulldogs here are gonna go on in and look for a shot, but they get stopped up there before the shot gets made through. But a good job keeping on the puck, and it comes off over to their side. It hasn't gone out of the zone yet, but here, now it comes out. And the Islanders are gonna come in. Stop up, drop pass to Tom Dixon, who looks and just fires it towards the net, but it does hit a leg. And now the Bulldogs are gonna come the other way, down the ice, two on two, cross the ice as they wait for numbers to come in, and a shot towards the center. And that one did not make it in on net. It was just up over a little bit too high. Here comes Ganok way out the other way. Now they're coming with three on two. And 11 shoots the puck in, but it goes wide over into the corner and is picked up by the Bulldogs and they wrap it around the boards. And they're looking now to just get that puck out here on a breakout as Dan Akwe is pressuring. And that was hit up in the air by the Dan Akwe player and then grabbed up by Desrano. They got a shot in on that. It comes out to the point, good shot in, hits a leg, and now the Islanders are gonna come back the other way with the puck up over the blue line, it's onside, 16 with the shot in, and that's gonna be dealt with easily by the goalie and just put off to the side. A Little bit tighter view than you're used to here. As there's only roughly about three to four rows worth of uh, seating here in the 
dog pound, so. But we'll do our best to chase the puck for you. One back, 17 takes a shot, hits a leg, and the Bulldogs player comes out with the puck. Looking for an outlet pass, puts it behind his own net, and his defending partner gives chase and then just lobs it into the center ice area where they come out three on three on four right now. So the numbers were in Ganakwe's favor, and they're gonna continue on in putting it in behind the net. And they poke it forward, but Gan grabs that puck and then dumps it down. And there's a hit there at the blue line for Desolano's player. He knocked the Ganakwe player off the puck. The puck still kept going. Ganakwe was able to keep pressure on. Again, Aqua's doing a great job of keeping that puck out and moving around. They did get out of the zone here, so they're going to have to backpedal as that puck comes back. And then in quick they go. Over to 16, who shoots it in. And it's just off into the corner, and then again, back to behind the net. Again, Aqua's pressure is not as predominant as it was yesterday at the beginning of the game for Smith Falls. They're coming off a little bit slower, but still keeping pressure. Rubik had to stop up and use his backside to impact the hit there, keep from getting taken out. Again, Aqua's gonna come back the other way now. Shot in, and that rebound is in a dangerous spot. It is grabbed up by Selleck, but he was unable to get that shot on as it hit a stick. Came through for Dixon, he was unable to grab that. Now here comes the Bulldogs the other way, and they get poke check, and offside is gonna be the call. Good call there. This is quite an intimate view today here for you guys in this gangster's paradise. 16.35 remaining here in the first period of this game, and it is nothing to nothing. Again, I do apologize, it is a little bit closer. We're doing our best. We only have the one lens currently, even though we are hoping to upgrade, get a couple more lenses here, give us a little bit better view sometimes in these different arenas. Dixon tips that off. It was grabbed up and intercepted by the Bulldogs, though. They're going to come back the other way. And the beat comes in with Dixon, passes it, gets the puck back, and then shovels it. They tried to jam that in there at the side of the net, but unable to. Oh, off a post. Shoot and they beat the goalie for Ganakwe, making it one nothing Bulldogs here in the beginning of the first period. It is 15 42, and Ganakwe is going to be down by one here with the short bench. And you have to think that the Bulldogs are going to do everything they can to keep the pressure on Ganakwe to get themselves in a prime position with a tired team leading into the third period. Puck won by the Islanders back into their own zone. They backpedal looking for an outlet pass, and then they fire it into the center ice area where 18 picks it up, comes and shoots it, but takes the body for it again. Like I said, you're gonna see the Bulldogs, I think, leaning on to the Islanders as a way to tire them out here with the short bench. Shot in, dealt with, just put in mind the net, and gobbled up there. That's gonna come around the boards here. Keeping that puck possession, just getting over the line, pushing their way through as they go in behind the net, looking for an outlet pass, got it to the blue line, and it was kept in by the Bulldogs defender. Comes all the way out here to Tennant. He's now gonna drive that puck in over the blue line. Loses it, but his teammate gobbles that puck up. Like a goal for Ganakwe, 1-1, and that game's gonna be tied up here early in the second. So 14.30 is the time. They were just calling the score for the, the Bulldogs goal when Ganakwe was able to pop that one in, and uh, 
Uh, just like that, we're back to an even score. Shot in, took a hit for that shot off of Dixon, but got the puck in. It was a little bit wobbly there by Withers, so he just kind of grabbed it, held it down, and he'll let his team get another face off here, off to his left hand side. Face off is won back by the Bulldogs. They get it back to the D, and a shot in, hits a body, and then Selleck picks that one up and gets it off to Verbeek, who just swings around, fires it down. It goes all the way down for an ice and call. So they're going to come set back down here. Decent crowd here tonight. Again, this is a little bit smaller arena, so it feels a little bit tighter, but still. He's has one by Ganakwe. But lose the puck there in the very side slot. And the battle for the puck comes out. They're unable to get it by Withers. And then the battle it now up into the corner. Salah's going to use his body to pick it out. Get the puck to Verbeek. Verbeek's going to get that puck off to Dixon. And that's Sean Dixon, not Tom Dixon. And a good move there behind the net by the Bulldogs player. Comes out with that puck, but then again, Akwe re grabs it by Salak and uses his body to shield the puck and get out. Back over to Dixon now, passes it. That one's definitely an offside call there. And it looks like Tom Dixon is just a step ahead of Verbi. So we'll get some fresh bodies here out for Ganakwe, and I believe the defender change here for the Bulldogs, and they're going to come back at it. They're doing a great job keeping possession of this puck right now. Keeping Ganakwe from being able to do too much with it. Ganakwe puts chase, which requires the Bulldogs to move it, and they turn it over at the blue line. In comes three, and a big save by the Bulldogs goaltender. But it gets turned over in the zone, and then a shot hits the stick, goes up out of the way, but that was an amazing save there on that cross crease pass at 13.04 here in the first period. A nifty move, two in. Oh, and a dirty pass to finish it off for the goal to make it two to one, Deserano. And that was just some good moves there. And again, without Ruby, without Nevers in net, it's a little different here now for the Bulldogs. They have a chance here, at kind of taking a little bit of a weak spot here on the Islanders on top of their short bench with a. Uh, Extra goalie. one back to the point where the Bulldogs get this, keeping control, trying to drive it into that dangerous slot area. But here come the Islanders the other way, but the puck is intercepted by the Bulldogs, and the Ganakwe player was offside, so they had to get back. But the Bulldogs are doing a great job breaking down that puck in the neutral zone and keeping Gan from being able to get too much of an attack. And a big hit there by the Ganakwe player. I think he took the worst of it though. He is yeah, definitely down and injured here. We're gonna have to get a player out. He tried to lay up that hit here, but ended up taking the worst side of it when they collided. We do have a whistle here, it is 12.02, but uh, Gan Ocre with the short bench. Can't really afford too many players getting hurt. And now they'll have a play in. They're getting the trainer over from 
the Bulldogs as Ganokwe doesn't have a trainer, it looks like, on their bench right now. So they're going to utilize the trainer from the Bulldogs to make sure that that player is fine. And again, that was a big, big collision set up there. Unfortunately, the hitter became the hitty and, and got hurt in the process. And that one's called offside. Gonna, gonna say I believe that was a bad call. I think they were still inside there, but we'll give it to them. Oh, we're going up over here. Give it to them, but uh, I do believe the player was, it didn't uh, go out when he made that move. And the referee, I think, thought it did go out, so. And that one's just gonna be dumped right in on the goalie here for the Bulldogs. Yanakwe is gonna give chase. And that's Selick in deep, but that puck comes back out the other way. Intercepted there by Dixon at the blue line. Over to Selick. Selick in, shot hard. You heard that one hit the goalie, but it was dealt with well. And now again, Akwe tried to get back onto the offensive uh, pressure there, but the Bulldogs were able to get that puck, get out. They're going to come in the other way and shot in right into the goalie's glove for Gan Akwe. Whistle at 11.23 here. Again, in this game here, we're just about uh, halfway through the first period, and uh, Rezzerano is definitely controlling this game much better than you would expect against Dan Akwe, but again, I believe this is a uh, an issue more so with Dan Akwe having a short bench and uh, being tired from playing last night. That you're seeing a little bit of a, a different kind of game by them than they played last night against the Smith Falls Rito. And that's King giving pursuit there. He was able to get that puck away from the Desrano defender, but not able to collect it afterwards. But they did come in with numbers here. Three over attacking the two Bulldogs. But out come the Bulldogs now the other way. And in comes 27. He does a little full drag shot, but it hits a body. And then picked up by the Gannon free player and goes off over into the corner, looking for an outlet. He leaves it there. Number 11 has it at the blue line. Shot in, and that was almost tipped in right in front of the net, but it was dealt with by Withers. And now Gianakwe is coming back the other way with the puck as they drive in. 11 has the puck, and he just sets it in behind the net as he didn't have numbers. They were changing. So uh, Desiron is going to come back the other way. But Gianakwe intercepts by 16. He's picked off, but Tennant gets that puck, shoots it off a player, and then retrieves his shot. But... Uh, Lose it after that. Now here come the Bulldogs. Two in deep. A drag, but a great play by the defenseman there. It's again Akwe keeping that puck from being able to make it through. And the Bulldogs now are giving chase in to pull that puck around. A little bit of a hit there after the, the puck had moved on, but uh, the referee didn't call on him, so that's going to get flipped out into the Gianakwe zone. Gianakwe is going to back cut it, looking for a pass, gets one out but it's intercepted by the Bulldogs now. They're gonna come in, two and deep, and a, a pass through, no call. No call indicated. Oh, there is a call in the back. Tripping, or hooking, sorry, hooking, but it's not gonna be a penalty shot. Uh, they're saying he wasn't in the clear, so it's just gonna be a two minute here penalty for Gannockwe. And we'll see if the Bulldogs are able to pop another one in here and give themselves a two goal lead here against Ganakwe. It is 4.41 remaining in the first period now. And Ganakwe will be dealing with this two minute penalty here. And that puck is won by Ganakwe and they turn and fire it down. Picked up by the goalie, but he mishandles it and has to skate after it. Back pedal as Ganakwe is putting on some pressure here. Not much, but a little bit in this uh, shorthanded setup for them. The beak is again giving chase. Pass over, shot, uh, the pass was off the foot, picked back up. They're doing a little bit of job cycling, but they're having a hard time landing the passes on this cycling. You know, they are keeping Jan 
pretty steady out here, so if they can get that puck moving around and a good shot on, they might be able to put one there and the net is going to become quite dangerous. They're swarming in behind the net there on the Islanders. And that comes out to the point, passed over, and shot in, rebound out. A great move by the Bulldogs player, shoveling it by Withers to make it three to one here on the power play. Now the Bulldogs have an insurance marker to give themselves a bit of time here. Now, Ganonkwe usually will come back at this point in the game with a little bit of an aggressive play. Um, however, they are short bench, so we will see if Ganonkwe does respond with their regular physicality or if they're gonna have a different kind of setup in this game here as they're down now by two. Good shot on that, goes over into the corner, and now the Islanders are just trying to do what they can to get that puck out, and it does go out to the blue line, but grabbed up by the Bulldogs. there behind the net by the Bulldogs player. They won't uh, take being pushed around too much in this league. They're definitely a stronger team, much like the Pipers. Islanders, any Mustangs seem to be the more physical teams within this league. Shot up high, dealt with by the Bulldogs. They're just gonna grab that puck. Again, yeah, not much pressure coming out of Ganakwe in this game. Oh. I think they put a lot of exertion last night. Good save by Rivers playing against the Smith Falls Ritos. But uh, they need to find something here if they're going to try to get a W, even though they are uh, far enough ahead in the standings that they shouldn't lose their first place position. Even if they were to lose on, here on out, I believe they still will walk away with a two-point lead over the two Americans. And an attempted hit there, but uh, the player saw it coming. And he had a great a wide open net shot, but uh, missed the wide open net. But there was definitely a dodge there as number 12 from the uh, Islanders was coming through for a hit. It could have been a little more dangerous than it uh, ended up, but again, have to keep an eye out. As I said, when Ganakwe loses, they tend to get a little bit more physical, and I think you're going to be seeing that here coming into the second. And if it doesn't have them in the lead by the third, you'll see it continue then. And this game could turn out to be quite a Quite an entertaining battle here between these two teams. As Desirano with the lead and the fact that they're physical will be giving Van Akwe a test now to see if they can bring it back as we're getting close to the playoffs. Again, points might not matter for this team here with Van Akwe, so, but the uh, points are mattering for the Bulldogs and the teams this close when they meet. They do like to get a little bit rough with each other. Good shot in there, got Wilders by Withers. And now the Bulldogs player gets chased, gets banged into the boards here. Again, we're starting to see that on most plays where bodies are starting to get smacked around a bit. And that's some good play in here for oh, And there is a player down. There's gonna be a call. I don't think it, it was caught on the camera there as it happened so close to the camera. But uh, the Bulldogs are pulling off their their goalie, and they're going to be coming out. I don't know what the uh, the penalty is going to be on that one. We're going to 
to see here again what we have going on for this. But uh, 16 is in the box for Ganaqua. Two minutes are up on the board, so it doesn't look like it's going to be a major. But it's still going to cost Ganaqua potentially. Another goal against here will give three goals to Deserano. Tom Lynch, I played lacrosse with him. He hits you, it feels like a freight train. So that definitely didn't feel good for the Deserano player. But they're only going to another penalty coming as the Deserano goalie is evacuated the net and got to the bench. The extra player is on as they're trying to drive it in and they're just doing what they can to pressure that into the net. But they're going to be a call here. Cross checking is the call against Ganakwe. So they're going to go down five to three here. There's a minute 12 remaining on the first penalty and it looks like 408 on the scoreboard. Maybe it was nine something last time I was talking. I never know the scoreboard here. The mesh is a little bit uh, impeding. So. But it looks like 409, 408 remaining on the score clock, and a two minute penalty has just been assessed to make the minute 12, five on three. And Desron has a chance to get two in here and really put a explanation right, I remark on this first period. <laughs> Ganakwe is doing a great job right now at just keeping that puck out of the possession of the Bulldogs and all the way back. So they got about 30 seconds remaining on this five on three. They're going to have to put pressure on now if they want to get one in and then hopefully have time to get a second one on the second penalty. However, dump back down and they have 14 seconds left, 12 seconds left here now. Sorry, until. The penalty is over the first one. Shot and score, and there is still time left on the board, ladies and gentlemen. So that's going to put Gan down by three, and there's still a penalty remaining for 53 seconds here in this game. 301, and it is four to one for the Bulldogs now over the Islanders. seems to be having some words with the referee. I'm not sure if that's going to end up hurting him down the road here, getting a unsportsmanlike or a misconduct uh, for, you know, abuse of the official. They've been doing that a lot lately here with the players to kind of stop the, the chatter that's been going on after every whistle sometimes. So we'll see what happens here. Again, it's early in the game, 2.49 remaining, and anything could happen at this point. 41 seconds remaining on the penalty to Sean Dixon. Oh, there's another penalty now to Ganakwe for two minutes. So Ganakwe is going down again on a five on three for 41 seconds here with 2.49 remaining in the first period. Ganakwe is starting to become undisciplined and Desirano is going to be able to use this to their advantage if Ganakwe with a short bench is spending a lot of it on the penalty kill.
Oh, and a little bit of a miscommunication ends up putting two Bulldogs into each other at the boards, and the puck gets grabbed by the Ganakwe and fired all the way down. It is played by the goalie and left. Now they're coming out with speed again. That first penalty is over now, so there's only one man down. But Desirano still is able to get one in and give himself a four-goal lead here. And two minutes remaining in this period. Delay a game was the call there for the uh, Islanders to, to put them on this penalty. And in come 11, toe drag, and he shoots and scores. That was just a beautiful goal with that toe drag. And shorthanded Ganakwe is able to get one in, making it 4 2 here now with a minute 38 remaining in the first period. Desiron is still pressuring the Ganok Islanders. Here's are trying to keep them off, but now <coughs> two on one with Tom Dixon over to Verbeek, and that shot is out of play, I think. Thirty-eight seconds remaining here. Now, or uh, face off one off to the right of the Desirano goalie, and Desirano is doing what they can to try to keep control on possession of that puck for the remaining time here in the period. Dan Ockley is just laying the body into each guy, trying to make him hurt a little bit prior to the next period, and that looks like. I don't know, did we have a, I think they got the call there. Yes, there was the call on the play against the Islanders and they're gonna go down again by a man here. So Cross is going to the box, two minutes and there's 14 seconds remaining here. So the biggest uh, notable in this first period has been the penalties by Dan Ockway has really been hurting them. That will be the uh, end of the period. something uh, as he's talking with his hands so uh, we'll see what happens here with that but uh, as for right now I'm gonna keep an eye on that but uh, I'm gonna chat with you we're gonna see what's gonna come back in the second period uh, again Ocre, like I said, comes out usually more aggressive more physical um, when they're losing um, so I expect to see that come out of them this period coming in where they're gonna be leaning on the Bulldogs significantly other than that, Bulldogs have been doing a great job keeping the physicality, you know, in their favor. A couple of big hits against them, but they've been landing a couple of big ones too. Especially the one on Gantt where the uh, the hitter became the hitty, 
So uh, we'll see what happens here in the second uh, period. But till then, we'll be back.
everybody welcome back here second period uh, about to start we're just getting everything good to go here try to do a little scream here in the uh, intermission uh, unfortunately just still not good enough uh, to get us out there so we're going to uh, keep it on recording it and send you out uh, the stream after the game is over so four to do for Deseronto Dan Aque is down a man for a minute 46 and we'll see what this game brings for us. Long stretch pass, big a save, but with a big rebound here, they come back the other way and just poked at the line, keeping that from getting over and all the way back down in to the Deserona zone. Oh, and a big intercept turn over here by Tom Dixon. Pulls the goalie out, but unable to get that one on the goalie for a shot. And then he ends up dropping to uh, Two of the uh, Bulldogs collide with each other, and that was a bad slash by Tom Dixon on the player that went unmissed by, unmissed, but missed, uncalled. I always get that one going by the uh, referees. So again, this could be a, uh, a sign of things to come. coming to the Islanders, hooking the call, and that one won't go missed as they're gonna go down for another five on three. This is the third five on three they've had back to back here in the last about uh, six minutes of play roughly. Uh, the Islanders are being very, very undisciplined at this point in this game, and you have to expect that it's just gonna turn into a problem from here there. Lots of fans giving their opinion to Eric Stalica, how they feel about him chatting it with the referee. 24 seconds remaining on this five on three here now for the Islanders all the way down and just shot in and hard around the boards. <laughs> scores the penalty had just ended for the Islanders so it is uh that's going to negate the other penalty as well but it will be five to two here with 18 12 in the second period so lots of time to play and lots of time to get out of hand here again Dixon's uh, slash there definitely was caught by the fans and the players just not the officials and I expect if he keeps playing like that he'll have uh, to answer for uh, plays like that so we'll see what happens here coming into the puck drop and we'll see what happens Tripping call to the Bulldogs as Sean Dixon was pulled down. And we're gonna have a two-minute call negating. Well not negating. There wasn't a penalty here. So now getting a power play for the Islanders and a penalty kill for the Bulldogs. We'll see if the Islanders are able to get a goal here and bring this one back to within two, or if the Bulldogs are gonna be able to hold on to the confusion of where this uh, was going to be dropped but looks like now they're going to be in the right one so we'll beat wins that one back and Tom Dixon now has the puck he sends it back to his D he's looking around 
And he just shoots it in through the center. Levin takes that whack at it, but not from a good angle. Comes back over to the side where Tom Dixon fires it back to nobody all the way in. Send it back to Withers. Withers got it. Clean pass. So Desron is going to try to put a little bit of pressure again. Again, not going to move with the puck. Out comes Selleck and he turns it over, but Eleven comes in to do a good pinch play. Out comes the Desron Aguirre to play that puck to keep it from being in a bad spot. Puck got hit the body, and I kept on going, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize about that. There's a too many men call coming again. Akwe 17 is going to be serving this one, and that will negate the penalty uh, against the Bulldogs now. But they only had 25 seconds remaining, but now it'll be four and four for 25 seconds, and then a minute 35 power play for the Bulldogs. Five seconds here remaining on the penalty to Ganakwe and 14.51 remaining in this second period. It is 5-2. It has been an exciting game. You can see the uh, both teams are on each other a little bit more. The Bulldogs are doing quite a good job pressuring and keeping the game in their favor. Seconds remaining, sorry, 14.35. It looks like it's on the clock right now. And uh, again, Akwe is holding on right now as they are down by three. They do have the firepower to bring it back, but they are short bench. And this could be something that comes back to hurt them further on in the game. That was a good save there by the goalie for Desirano on the number, I think that was 10 who was streaking in there.
save there by the dead Toronto goalie as uh, Verbeek was uh, got a pass from Selleck right out in the open. Selleck took the player down, but no call there. Now the Deserano player takes down one of the players in front of the Gann bench, and he's going to get two minutes for it. So, missed call on Gannock, great call on Deserano. Two-minute power play here for Gan Akwe with 13.29 remaining in the second period. Good save by the Desert Army And the puck gets in after that. There was a weak shot that slid in off the rebound. Just like that, the penalty is going to be over now with the goal on the power play. Five to three, and Gan Akwe has time now to start bringing this one back if they use their scales here with 13 17 remaining in the second period. into a door that I don't believe was properly closed uh, as they both went blowing through the door and we're just going to hope that everyone is okay there as that was a very dangerous collision to happen here. And yeah, the referees are going to check that door to make sure that door is closed. There wasn't really any way too close to that door to make, a, make me think someone just came through it that it would be in that, uh, that position. So I think it might just not latch properly and Thank God uh, no one uh, got injured there on that play. And Selleck there takes a run at the player for the Bulldogs. Looks like Dixon's lost his stick there somehow. And they're escorting one of the Deserano players over towards the uh, the penalty box and they're doing a slashing call. So I think you're going to see a penalty going here to the uh, Deserano Bulldogs for slashing that stick from Tom Dixon. And they're going to go down a man again now here with the five to three game and they're down to their two minute penalty. Beak went offside, not purposely, but he did get put offside. And now Verbeek is having some words with the, the linesman about the offside call as the player was pushed off. So a minute 33 remaining here on the penalty to the Bulldogs. And it's 5 to 3 game here. Trips up, but then grabs the puck up under his legs to keep that from being taken in a breakaway, which was a good play by Verbeek there to keep that puck, because that would have been a, a dirty turnover at that position. And they're fighting over to the boards, a little bit of bumping, but uh, no call there. Verbeek comes in support to grab that puck out. I think that was uh, potentially Latimer, I think. Where he took that one from. And back in the over to the far side. And 44 seconds remaining here. 
and the Bulldogs are just gonna take that back deep into their zone, kill off some more time on this penalty as there's 30 seconds remaining. Big save there by the goalie. And his defenseman puts it back into him, which was dangerous. But he was able to grab that up, and then uh, his defenseman was coming in dangerously in top of him. Uh, they were lucky they didn't fall in on the goalie on that play. But uh, everyone looks to be fine there. off to the right of the Deserano goalie here with 10.42 remaining in the second period. Shot in and he just deflects it over into the corner. But uh, a bad pass out by the Deserano defender. Put itself in a dangerous position. Now, there's a good battle going on in front of the net here. And Deserano is able to get that one out and again Akwe is going to hold it in around their blue line and bring it back out. Intercepted by Desiree. Oh! Dodge is a hit. That's a second dodge there for a hit. As this has gotten a little bit, uh, feels like the guys are taking some runs at each other here. In this game here, 16 has been has been headhunting out there right now, and almost taking a couple people right off their feet. Some speed again. Rubik's coming through, but he gets stripped of the puck as he tries to deke out the defense. Turnover to Tom Dixon. Shot and gobbled up. Again, 5 3 here in this game. 10 minutes. No, 8 minutes. And 43 seconds remaining here, it looks like, on the clock. Might be missing a couple of light bulbs over there. Dog Town gets crazy. And a good save there by the Deserano goalie. Sella comes out with it, but he was unable to get it right back in on the net. Does come out. And now Dixon has it, turns it over. Sella gets it there. Big save, but the rebound trickles and gets batted in. And Ganokwe has now made a 5 4 game here with 8.26 remaining in the second period. See, the physicality has cranked up here in this game, and now Ganakwe is starting to get control of it again. Deserano needs to start leaning in on the Ganakwe players if they want to get a W here. And that faceoff is won by Ganakwe. We'll see how Deserano responds as now they only have a one goal lead now, and it's starting to get a little bit more dangerous. Now keeping this puck in the zone here 
and keeping the pressure on the Bulldogs. They need to get this puck out here and start swinging the pressure on this goalie here for Dan Ockridge. He's not their normal goalie, so they might be able to break him a couple more times. Faceoff is won by Desiron, shot in high and grabbed by the Ganakwe goalie up real quick. That puck was going over the net. It wasn't in uh, danger, I think, of going in, but he kept it so there was no rebound off the glass that could have been dangerous for him to deal with. And gobbles that one up. Again, another shot. So Desirano is just getting as many shots as they can on him right now. Again, they're trying to most likely tire these guys out as they have another period to go. And Desirano has about another six to seven players, I would guess, out there on the lineup tonight. Five four here with seven minutes and four seconds remaining in the second period, and Ganakwe has brought this game back to within one goal. Let's go. Let's go. And with them being the leading uh, team in the West, you'd have to think that they have the skill set available to bring this game back and get the W. So Desirano has to hold on. Now that was uh, called uh, onside, and then it was grabbed up by Withers, but. I believe that uh, the call from the bench was probably correct there from Ganakwe as that was probably offside. Puck one back by Ganakwe and he gets it all the way over to Eric Selleck. He's going to get that pass off. Tom Dixon just cranks the shot wide of the net, out of the way at reach of Verbeek. And now here comes back the Bulldogs with a shot right in on Withers and he's just going to gobble that one up. 6, 36 remaining here in the second. Yes. So he's gonna spin with the puck and he's gonna bring it on out. Back gets it again, drives it into the corner here. He does have Verbeek and Dixon with him out there. And the defenseman gets it as it gets it curled the other way. And now the Bulldogs come out over the blue line. And they have a three on three situation. Shot and scores. That's going to give the Bulldogs the two goal lead again. Whoop, let's put in six. We're going to have the two goal lead again here now in this game in the 6 4. And there is six minutes, 12 seconds remaining in the second. So there's still a lot of time to go here in this game. And we've already had 10 goals. remaining here in the second in this 6-4 game for the Bulldogs so far. Again, Akwe is trailing and they need to see what they can do to bring this one back. But with the non-regular goalie in there with Ruby and Nabs both not being here and the shortened bench, Gan Akwe is facing a potential loss here at this point unless they're able to turn it around. A 
shot just wide, goes around, and Dan Akwe has finally got that puck out of the zone now, and Desron is going to backpedal, looking for an outlet pass to get that puck out and down into the zone. Shot goes off the leg, behind the net, wide around, and now a turnover here, number 11 for the Bulldogs, shot wide and missed the net, otherwise that would have been a great opportunity. Here comes the Islanders, and the Desiron Bulldogs did a great job to break that puck up on the way back. High stick in the play, but it's going to get touched up by the Bulldogs, so no high stick. And the Bulldogs are just going to flick it back in as it looks like they're calling an offside here on the Bulldogs. Rubik tries to make a move and off the side of the net. That's why that bottle went up in the air. But it went right out to this dangerous part of the slot, but it's picked off by the Bulldogs and they're going to give chase back onto Dixon who just turns and fires it down. And now the Bulldogs have it in their zone and they're looking to break that one out. And Gravit goes in to give chase behind over in the corner and he's fighting off two Bulldogs, but the Bulldogs now are coming out with the puck two on two here. And the pass didn't make connection, but they're still putting on some great pressure, keeping that puck in the zone. Now it comes out to Sunrise and Verbeek passes it to South, back to Verbeek. Shot high and up and over off of the glass. I'm guessing that hit the netting. So they're gonna be calling it out. Off there as well, so they're gonna be getting that net put back on again. That face off is coming outside here with it looks like 334 left to go here in the second period in this 6 4 game. Oh, sorry about that. Lost the puck there. We got her back there. It's going in behind the net. penalty on the hit that came on to Tim Tennant there. They look like they got him a little bit up, so I don't know if it's interference roughing. What is going to be called? We'll see here. Interference. Interference will be the call. Two minutes for interference with 3.16 remaining here in the second period. 6-4. So again, Akwe is going to get their opportunity here to try to put another one in and shorten that lead to only one again. Puck all the way down. Withers is going to stop that puck up, leave it for Verbeek, who's going to come behind his net and just flick the puck off to his other forward. Sal is going to have the fight for that puck back there as it's being held in as well by the defenseman. Broke up there by Verbeek. Shot. Hits the stick and goes off. That might have just caught the post if the stick wasn't there. So great save by the Bulldogs goalie to keep it here with the two goal lead. 2.44 remaining and 1.28 on the penalty. player in the head. They're going to whistle that down right away and make sure he's okay. And out comes the trainer. And it looks like it may have got him in the side of the head, not in the flesh, hopefully. Never want to see something like that happen. Quick whistle, 240 remaining in the second here with 124 remaining after that sh slap shot that got taken into the head there, the player with the stoppage. So Ganokwe battles that puck again back to Verbeek, who's gonna look for a pass over. Gets it to 11, he tries to feed it out front, he does feed it, but Selleck misses the e pass and can't get that shot off. Verbeek comes all the way back to grab it and then dumps it over to, I don't know who that is, 10, 20, Palkowski. No number 10, he hit a wall to make it out and then back to Verbeek. He's gonna get the puck over here now and start driving up through center. He's gonna cut in through the zone and then drop that puck back off to Tom Dixon, who gives it back to him. Now back over to number 10, I do that where it looks like might be Latimer over there. 
over the 11, far pass over. And Dixon gets the puck and puts it in. So Tom Dixon's gonna get a goal here to make it 6-5 in the second on that power by two minutes remaining here in the second, exactly two minutes. So see what happens here, 6-5. This one has not been short of goals yet today. Desron is right back on the pressure on McGann, trying to get another goal, give themselves that two goal lead and a chance for centering there. Almost worked out in Desron's favor, but icing waved off. So Tim Tennant was giving chase. He stops up and he's gonna go over to the bench, get some other fresh legs on here. But Desron is coming back the other way now and a cut through with a back pass there, but unable to have that one landed. And now the Bulldogs are hemmed in behind the net trying to get it out in front on a wraparound attempt, jamming, jamming away at it, and it doesn't go in. A little bit of hugging going on there between the players. Again, they're not sure if this game's gonna get out of hand here or not with uh, both teams leaning on each other pretty good. But right now, cool heads are going to prevail. Minute 17 remaining here in the second period. There seems to be some conversation going on here. Looks like the players are expecting it to be inside, but the uh, linesman might be wanting to say it should be outside. And everybody's moving outside the zone for this one. So we have 105 remaining here in the first period. Desiron is going to try to get out of the break, out of the zone here. As there's only 53 seconds here remaining in the period. But it looks like we definitely have a potential injury here on the play. There is no indication of any penalty here coming to Selleck. So we'll see what happens, but they're gonna be taking off the Deserano player off the ice. That's number eight, so uh, that's uh, scary to see. Hopefully he's fine. Uh, looks like there's gonna be no call to Selleck, and this is where we get most fearful in these games, ladies and gentlemen. When the referees aren't making the, the big dangerous calls like this, the next thing that will happen will the players will start to police themselves, and someone will be trying to take off his uh, Eric Selleck's head. I'm sure if uh, they deem that it was a dirty hit. Again, it's hard for us to see here, uh, as it is a tight arena, and getting the camera down onto that angle is hard. We uh, didn't get downtime, so I'm not sure what caused the initial hit, but uh, it looks like no call from the referee. And now a player, Salek tripped up the player and they're now gonna call one against Salek. So they're not gonna call one against the bigger hit they just did, they're gonna call one against this uh, little bit weaker of a trip here. Or what they're calling that signal, high stick roughing, something like that. It was a trip. Uh, two minutes here to Salek in the sixth 
six to five score right now for the Bulldogs. They're holding on right now with the lead, and they now have the power play. Um, but they did just have a player go down with a potential injury, and that's not looking good right now for the Bulldogs. Yeah, I think they're calling that one a hook. Twenty-six seconds remaining here in the second period, and we have a minute forty-six remaining on Selleck's penalty for hooking. I'm hitting after the whistle there. I think there might have been a couple cross checks, but no call. There has to be calls on this stuff as it's getting to be potentially going to cause some major issues here coming into the third period. Five seconds remaining here in the period, and they'll have a face off. And Deserano gets in and has an opportunity, but unable to get that one through. And they're just going to uh, separate up here and go to the change rooms. Lots of discussions coming out from both benches, so I have a feeling we're going to. Uh, have some uh, some entertainment uh, coming in the third. Uh, we do see over here that uh, the Deseronto coach is speaking with the referee and with good measure too. After that hit by Selleck over here on the corner, uh, as you could tell, that player was definitely. Uh, not uh, not doing well from that hit into the boards. So uh, I'm sure that they're having a little chat with uh, their opinion here on what's taking place. So just gonna jump back over here right now again, ladies and gentlemen. We hope that player is fine. Uh, again, Akwe is trailing by one in this game. It is 6-5 for Desirano. Uh, Desirano. We'll see what happens here coming out in the third period. Are they going to be able to uh, hold off Ganakwe's attack? Uh, Ganakwe is, is quite aggressive, uh, and uh, they can get more physical when they're losing uh, games. So we expect to see quite a bit of uh, pushback from them in the third period um, here as they try to get themselves a, uh, a W here tonight. So uh, keep an eye on uh, what's on the game here. We'll see what's going to happen come uh, the third period.
My name's Brady Liebold, and I've been to hell and back. This is the road to recovery. I'm grateful, oh yeah, able, oh yeah, I'm stable, oh yeah, no label, oh yeah, you know me. What is going on, everybody? Welcome. Hockey to hell and back. That I survived, it was like something like crazy happened. But the coach thought I had such a good camp, the AHL coach thought I had such a good camp as a 19 year old, or 18 turning 19 year old at that camp. He's like, I want to bring Chris in at the end of this season. And then that could have been the worst for me because now I'm back at home, right? As proud of you as your dad, as everybody else. How we got there, it's how we get out. Yeah, dreaming wild takes way more shit to surprise me now. When it was going down, couldn't stand your voice without blacking out. And that's what we do. Every day, same as we're trying to prove you'd feel my Hey everybody, welcome back. We got a minute before the game uh, resumes here, or at least they buzz it and the players come back out. Uh, just want to let everybody know that I did take a look at that uh, play. Uh, Selleck didn't get a hold of number eight there at the end. It was another player off screen. Um, I watched Selleck went all the way around in the screen. You can see him the whole time he didn't contact with him. So just want to say uh, sorry about that one, Selleck. Uh, I thought you got the, the player, but it was someone else. So uh, uh, that's why Selleck didn't get a penalty because he didn't get the player. Uh, but the penalty did look like it went unmissed. Um, as uh, it was uh, unfortunately goal just off screen, we get the player down, we don't get the, uh, the player that caused the infraction. So, uh, other than that, not a big deal, it's over and done with, uh, and it wasn't Selleck. So, we're going to start this up here, 6 5, a crazy game. Uh, they are uh, looking like it's going to uh, be one of those games that comes right down to this third period. The wire, we'll see, is Ganakwe able to bring this one back. They're only down by one. They definitely have the skill to do it, but they have a short bench. Are they getting tired? And uh, does Deserano, you know, what's their game plan? Are they going to be leaning on them? Are they coming out firing up and uh, going after the uh, Islanders, or are they going out after the two points? I don't know what's... Uh, way this game's gonna go, but Ganakwe has been pushing back the second period. So uh, we'll see here, is it gonna be a pushback from Desirano or is Ganakwe gonna be able to control the physicality here of this game? Ganakwe does have a penalty sitting on the scoreboard for a minute 20 remaining here. Uh, so the Desirano Bulldogs will have the, uh, um, whoa, here we go. The Desirano will have the, uh, intermission here or the, the power play at the side of the period as you can see there uh you can see the numbers there right now but as you can tell the the white there does sometimes break up that scoreboard so here comes the bulldogs again aquandos are already out here on the ice now and they're gonna be uh see who's going in the box here for it looks like Selleck. He's in the box. I'm confused. I can't remember what happened at the end of the third period, to be honest with you guys. Expect this to be a all out battle between these two teams. Faceoff is won by the Bulldogs back into their zone as they're going to move that D to D and then look like they're going to try to bust out here for the next two pass back to their D. Driving over the blue line and shot that one in around. Didn't make it out too far for the other side. But AD does intercept that pass from the Islanders and they are able to get the Islanders in that box moving around and a shot that goes wide the net but Desiree jumps right on it and they have the puck in behind the net. They are moving that puck around here, looking for an outlet into that dangerous slot. They did find one, and a second, third opportunity is stopped by Withers in the net there, as they did a great job keeping that puck out here. 46 seconds remaining on the penalty to Selleck, and then we will have him back on the ice, and they'll be back up to five on five. See what happens here in this remaining part of the power play, but for the first um, 40 seconds of this period so far, they have done a great job, or 35, four seconds, they've done a great job moving that puck around on the offense here for this power play.
and a good save. He had to hold that puck up high and drive out of his crease as the Bulldogs were coming in, crashing in on his crease. And that's one back by the Bulldogs to the blue line. And then shot towards the net, hits a body, goes off into the corner, but the Bulldogs do recover it. They are moving the puck around as Gianakwe Dixon comes in. He does a little bum shove, but the bum shove doesn't work for him. So a shot in, and that got tipped up. Dixon goes sliding out of the zone. He needs to get back in and cover up the part of his box there as he as they are down now we do have about 13 seconds here remaining 10 seconds remaining sorry now before Salik returns to the ice is run back in behind the Ganakwe net and they spin around just fire it on down into the Deserano zone where the Deserano player will grab that up and spin it down to center ice where it gets chipped in deep and there's no icing call so they're going to give chase here and Ganakwe is now back to even strength here so we'll see now what their push is like here for the third periods their beak just drives in hard shoots it up but it's dealt with easily and now the Bulldogs come out the other way as they cut through the D but he gets bumped off the puck his uh, driving and winger was able to cut that up but now here comes the Islanders the other way they're trying to speed a pass through to the player in behind but they're unable to now the Deserano goalie does come out and get that puck and now Deserano's driving back in they only have two on four so they don't have enough numbers yet as they're going to try to lay it off throw it off into the corner and now back towards the net as they're trying to gain some sort of structure here in the zone but here comes Tim Tennant cuts in and takes a big hit off of the blue line pops right back up and keeps on going and now he has the puck fighting off on the board, puts it back to the D, and then it's a shot in, and that one was awkwardly handled there by the Deserano goalie as he was blind to the shot. And that puck comes through, misses the net, goes over to the boards, and a chuck, uh, hack at the puck, drives it back out, and now it's in front of the net, hits number 14, he goes down awkwardly, and now he's popping back up. He looks to be injured, but he's still able to skate under his own weight off, so they're not gonna blow that down. He comes over the blue line, but turnover, and now here comes the Bulldogs. They're getting pushed off by 16 over to the boards, and a centering opportunity gets grabbed up by the Islanders, and they're coming back the other way now, two on two. In comes a third trailing man, and he gets picked off by the trailing Bulldog player who stripped his pocket and then a hard shot in on the goalie from the point gets eight up and pushed off to the side. Now the Bulldogs are going to come out the other way and that puck's going to go all the way down for icing. I needed this breath. 16-47 here in the third period and the uh, faceoff is going to go just to the right of the Deserano goalie. The Verbeek's gonna set up in the faceoff for Gantanakwe. Can't see the number of the uh, Deserano player. So Verbeek loses that one to the Deserano player who's able to get it to his defender who plays it behind his net and dumps it up and it goes up and out of play. And Deserano saying it was went out with the glass. The Islanders are saying it was up and out of play and should be a call. What do we have here? Play is going to be inside the zone and no call. One back by Dan Ackway and Solid tried to send it back over but it hits a foot and bounces out and then Elastic requires some fast back. But here comes the Bulldogs and hope oh, that one gets broken off and now here comes Tom Dixon for the Islanders over the blue line, sends the pass over to Eric Solid. He covers it back to him and he gets a shot off but a big save. And it comes to the point, there is uh, some bumping bodies at the point, and that puck comes out. Dixon tries to lean on one of the on the players and ends up going over on his own. And now he just gets up now, after all that time down on the ice. Now he's tripped off, Sal's going to come back 
to lose it at the blue line, and the Bulldogs are now going to come in. One on one, drives in deep and bumps in with the goalie, but no call as he was directed in there by Sean Dixon, who doesn't have a stick. He's just standing there with no stick. He's got the best seat in the house right now. Selleck is fighting himself on the boards. Does run a pair, goes down, but he's able to get that puck over to their side. And a long ice pass here. And the Islanders are out of his own. But a turnover at the center ice. And 96 is doing what he can to get through the Islanders players, but they strip him from the puck. And now that puck is just dumped in deep by the Islanders in behind the Deserano net here, as they need to find some sort of structure, I believe, to get this Deserano team hemmed in their zone. As right now, it's just one off each chance they get. And here comes 96, shoots it, hits a foot, but he stays on the puck. He does have support now coming in with his teammates, and that puck is chipped up and out over to number 11, Hale, and he just takes the body and then scoops off. He still has the puck, he goes out and throws it back to his defenseman, who now is gonna change direction and come back the other way. And a long pass, that missed everybody, icing's the call, and Tennant wasn't able to get a hold of that puck. He's uh, indicating the ref because he was bumped into, but... He's saying center ice. They're saying all the way down. And center ice is where it's gonna go. So I guess they're saying that the uh, icing was caused to by a bump. They're on number six, Tim Tennant, and they're gonna bring it to center ice here. So Tim's call is correct when he says it should be at center ice. 1434 remaining here in the third period and Desirano wins that face off and they get into the zone but a player goes down and the puck goes in behind the net no call by either referee and they're going to play on that puck's going to come all the way down now here and Tennant just misses that pass and that one is going to be icing and come all the way back down for the Islanders and we're going to get some fresh legs out for the Bulldogs. <laughs> Offsides the call there, and they'll come off. All right, I believe that says 13.59, still on the clock here for this third period. Of this wild affair here in Deserano, 6-5 Bulldogs over the Islanders. And we're not sure what's gonna happen here. Will the Bulldogs be able to hold it off? Will Deserano to come to Ganakwe's attack that they seem to have in the games. Who knows what's gonna happen, but right now Desirano is sitting. One goal up with 13, 50 to go. I swear that time changes every time I see it. chip play there but unfortunately the stick was held up by the Ganakwe defender so they were unable to get a handle on that lob pass going into the zone. Here comes Verbeek, puts it over to Salak. Salak's going to drive towards the net and unable to get that one other than just lightly off of the pad. What do we have here? Hand the puck. And that's going to be one back by the Islanders. They're going to turn back here and just flick it forward. 
and drive in behind the net. But the Bulldogs are able to turn that one back out. And right now, time is on their side as that icing call comes down. There's only 12.37 left to go here, and they do have the lead, so Ganakwe has to put one in the net, or Desirano can just hold this one out to the end. Sometimes never know where they're going to be. Another player injured here on the ice. Or is it a skate? It might be a skate issue. I think his blade is broken on his skate. So I don't believe this is a, I believe this is an equipment issue, not a, yeah, not no injury there, just an equipment issue. That one's gonna be solved up very quick here. And we're gonna go back down into the Deserano zone with 12. 0-2 remaining here in the second period, or third period. And a one goal game for the Bulldogs right now over the Islanders. A good attempt there by the Bulldogs to try to get the insurance marker with 10.52 left remaining here in the third period. Ganakwe has to figure out something if they want to bring this game back as Desirano is right now doing a great job keeping that the Islanders offense down to a minimum. And a good grab there by the uh, Ganakwe goalie, Terry Weathers, who's filling in as Nevers and Ruby were unavailable for today.
call coming here. It looks like it's the Ganakwe. I'm still thrown back by uh, Tim Tennant's hit there, but maybe that's what the call is going to be. Was, was it a high hit? As Tim Tennant is coming to the bench, maybe a high stick there. So two minutes, uh, Tim Tennant wearing number six right now. He's the backup goalie here. He's one of the goalies for the Islanders, and he ended up putting a guy down here. That was pretty good to see. Dual world player there. A tripping call there to the Bulldogs player as he laid out there on 16 to keep him from getting to the net. He made an attempt for the puck. It wasn't that he went just for the body, but the body going down was the, uh, the outcome of it. Now, uh, just keep in mind, this is four on four hockey here for a minute 19, and then the Islanders will have a shortened 30 second power play here in this game. Oh, a little less than 30 seconds even, but right now, like I said, the time is the Bulldogs' best friend here as they're enjoying this one goal lead here in the final 10 minutes. There's less than 10 minutes, it's 8.35, but it's the final, the final half of the third period. Here comes Verbeek. He's gonna dance over the line. Nice move, shot wide. He definitely has the shot to be able to put this one away and or tie it up, but you gotta hit the net if you want that to happen. And now Gans getting a bit more pressure here. 20 seconds remaining on their penalty. 52 remaining on the penalty to the Deserano player. Now for a short 30 seconds. The Islanders will enjoy a power play, and they are down by one, so they need to get this down in and a shot on that, make something dangerous happen. Great opportunity and a big save by the Deserano goalie here. 19 seconds remaining on this penalty, 7.25 remaining in the third period. Tom he gets back up, gets a quick shot off, but unable to get that one on net. He's going to be standing up, posted there in front of the net, trying to screen the goalie. And that's going to be the end of the penalty for the Bulldogs. So it's all even up five on five now. And the Ganogby player goes down on that puck. Oh, what do we have a whistle for? I think they're calling that one offside. I would have called a hand on the puck. So they're going to have the face off over to the bench at the blue line there for the Ganakwe Islanders. 6.55 remaining here in the third period. And the person commenting beside me is not part of the broadcast. They're not a commentator. You're just hearing them because we're all packed in here like sardines. Again, Akwe has got the pressure on here on the, the five on five play. And you have to think they're looking right now for that goal. And there's a big block. He gets a shot now up high. 
And the Bulldogs are doing what they can to keep that puck from going in. We have an offside call. It was called back right as soon as it went in, but they still continue to play. The noise in here is getting exciting. Six twenty-one remaining here in this game. The Bulldogs are close to taking the Ganakwe Islanders for a loss. Not sure what happened there. Both players were going. There was some yelling. And then there's like the players stopped up and then they called an icing call. So not sure. We're just doing our best here for you guys. the board there by the Bulldogs to get out of zone. Dan has to take up and now come back in on the attack here. We have six minutes, three seconds remaining as the Ganakwe Islanders are down by one and pressuring here. But the Bulldogs get it out to the blue line. It stays in, hits a foot, and now here comes the Bulldogs, three on two. And it comes around the backside and that loses the hand on the puck. Gets it, number 11, he gets it to the center slot. Shot in, oh, grab the rebound shot, and a big save there by Ritter. But the Anaka now is coming out the other way. They're coming with speed here. Two in, cross ice pass to 16, unable to get connected up, and then he just dumps it towards the bench, and the Anaka gets on it. Dixon sets it across the ice, and 12 turns fires, it hits a Bulldog, and they will clear that one out. 91 gives Chase. It gets sent back over to Dixon. He mishandles it. Has to go back in. He's chased by 91, but he sends it over to his little defenseman, who now gets it up and out. 16 chips it by, but the Bulldogs defender picks that one up. He backpedals to his net and then fires it over to the boards where he has a player who just fresh come up. Pit, tips it forward. That puck gets chipped off right into the slot and a centering opportunity. Unable to connect for the Bulldogs. Otherwise, that would have been another goal for them to potentially put this one away. Here comes Dixon. Pump fake, drives in, comes out, puts it right to the side of the net, and it's right there. Big shot off, and now Dixon picks it up again, sends it across with a body, comes with a leg, and stops that puck. Now the Bulldogs are coming the other way. And a shot gets handled off over into the corner. And now the Islanders pick it up, dump it out. Long dump over. And it was intended for Tom, but it couldn't make it to him. And now the Bulldogs come back the other way. And in a bad opportunity for, a great opportunity for the Bulldogs. Bad op chance for the Islanders, but the goalie saves them on this one. Here comes Rubik. He comes over, chips past it to 11, who shoots it towards the net, but it gets taken off over to the corner, back to the D, but nine comes there and steps it for the Bulldogs and gets it passed off. He's gonna take it over the blue line and pull back, and he just shoots it by the net. It goes wide, and now it's over to the boards. Dan Akwe pinches out, but the Bulldogs come and fire back in. 3.45 remaining here in the third period in this one goal game. Dan Akwe is holding behind their net, looking for a breakout. They are running out of time here if they want to bring this game to a tie and force overtime. And a pass that goes into some feet and gets kicked all the way out to center ice. Ganakwe backpedals into their own zone, but then dumps it back out and they just chip it in. But the Bulldogs come out with it. The Bulldogs are doing a great job of keeping that pressure on and they're driving it in, keeping it deep in the zone as that puck's bouncing off the side of the net and then again, again, turns and puts it behind their net. They need to get a forward movement here if they want to tie this game up. They're running out of precious time. Desirano forces a turnover in behind the net. And a rebound that came out, got kicked off over into the corner. Otherwise, Desron might have had one there. Cross ice pass and Desiron scores. Now, making a 7-5 with 244 remaining here. Or 77 goals <laughs> on the scoreboard. It's only supposed to be 7 5 with 244 remaining here in the third period. Ganakwe is very soon to be going home. 
with a loss to the Desirano Bulldogs here in the dog pound. And some slashy slash out the face off, and Ganakwe comes out with the puck. And it goes in deep. Dixon goes in after the puck, and he is chased down. He does have a pursuit from Latimer, who gets it up, and Verbeek tries to get that one out. It's in behind Verbeek. He didn't notice it, and they just swat over the defenseman. That comes over to Tom Dixon, who crosses it over to Selleck. Offsides the call. Two twenty-two remaining here in this two-goal game, and it does look like Desirano is most likely going to take this game at this point. Ninety-six faces off against ninety-one. Or sorry, sixty-one, and he wins it all the way down. And Dixon chases that puck down. Sean loses it there to the Desirano player who tries to shell a pass forward, but it's turned over. And then a play at the line. Dixon tied up the Desirano player's stick, and that puck's still underneath. And now Verbeek pulls it out. No call by the referee. Let that play on. I feel that should definitely have been a holding call there, but you know. What do I know? Here comes Dixon driving in behind the net, gets bumped up on the board, and that puck's gonna come around to the side of the net. And then Sean Dixon bowls over one of the Desirano players. Again, no call there. The referees have put their whistles in their pockets. And now it's gone towards the net, back to the point, shot in. And Selleck tried to chop that one down on the goalie, but he was able to handle that one. Now it comes all the way out to the point. Dixon's gonna grab that puck, put it right to the blue line, they're gonna chip it in, and it gets turned over there. And a couple opportunities there. 16 is putting that towards the net. And then a shot by Dixon wide of the net. Not on. And everybody's claiming right now. There's lots of complaints. Goal. Well, that's a three goal lead now for the Bulldogs, making it 8 5. And that will be. That will be it for the game. Other than the last minute 15, which who knows, uh, I doubt we'll see too much uh, unnecessary stuff happen as anything now would cost you an additional game, most likely the last game here of the season, and you'd be going on a, well, maybe some of these guys want an extra break, I'm not sure. But lots of discussion here. I'm pretty sure you're gonna see Sal get tossed if he continues, as he is just giving it to the referee here. Just chewing him out, something fierce at the scorekeeper box. And 24 has left the game. He is, he left out. I'm not sure what took place there, but he's gone to the change room. And with a minute 10 left, Gan Akwe is just gonna let Desirano, by the looks of it, just toss that puck around as they kill time here. One minute to play here. Desirano is still putting on the pressure. We've seen Gan put on the pressure at high numbers, so this might be their way of getting, you know, a little bit of that back on Gan. And a flick in. You're gonna be met out there by the goalie. We got a whistle here. Sl uh, looks like a slashing penalty is coming here to, I believe it's going to be the Desert Runners number 91. So with 29 seconds left, a two minute slashing penalty, which even if Ganakwe is able to score, is not gonna mean too much at this point, as this game's all but over, as there's no way Ganakwe is gonna pot three in 30 seconds. Looks like Ganakwe's got a little less of a aggressive crew on the ice for this last part. That probably keep from having anything too crazy come down and happen in this final 20 seconds here remaining.
The Bulldogs defeat the Gannock Rounders 8-5 here in Deserano. Gannock Way has a game against uh, Smith Falls. I'm not sure who Deserano plays, if there's anyone they're playing at this. But our next game is going to be an arm prior for the arm prior tweed game tomorrow. And then in less Bytown and South Granville's rescheduled, this is, that will be our last EOSHL game. Uh, this regular season game this season. Uh, playoffs at this point may not be uh, may not be covering the playoffs, but we will see what happens as uh, once the league at this point. Mitch Gagne, league president, hasn't put out any type of schedule or anything like that. So we really can't uh, be sure will be available but uh, as to the uh, regular season tomorrow arm prior tweed 430 it's gonna be a great day love what the uh, Bulldogs are doing here they're saluting their fans great fans here great game I'm sure Gannockway is not the happiest team out there but Deseron is definitely gonna be happy they got this W great game 8-5 we hope you enjoyed it. I will be, uh, like I said, tomorrow, 4.30, Iron Fryer, me, maybe Super Dave. Uh, no Ryan Woods, just me, though. So it'll be me, potentially Super Dave commentating. If not, it'll be just me. That'll be probably our last broadcast, at least from our, uh, this season, for the regular season. So 